Hi, my name is Iago Passos, and today we're going to talk about Gateway. Um, in this case, I've got two internal services. I'm using Docker for this example, um, but in, in the real life, I've got two uh, internal services, and I need a gateway to stand in front of them, right? So my client doesn't want to expose these internal services externally, so the only way we can do that is via a gateway. All right, so this gateway is going to be exposed externally, and this gateway is going to talk to the two uh, internal services, right? So in this example, I'm going to show you here. I've got um, two .NET Core uh, 2.0 applications. Um, we we're going to use Docker Compose um, for the example, and then I'm going to introduce the gateway and how simple it is to implement the gateway. So let's have a look. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got two uh, projects in my sample solution, um, service A and service B, and I'm using Docker Compose. So if you've got Visual 2017, you're going to see this nice uh, little flag called Enable Docker Support, which is awesome. Um, and it creates the Docker file automatically, and it inputs uh, it creates a service in your Docker Compose, all right? So I've got these this two uh, APIs here, and I'm just going to run, just going to press F5. It's going to build the application, and it's going to run uh, the two applications at the same time. All right, so it started the two applications, and you can see that this one is running on port um, 32768. And just so we can see here in the console, I'm gonna check all the containers that are running uh, currently in my Docker host, right? So one is the one that I'm just showing in the background, this one. Now I'm just gonna open another tab with the 6.9, all right? So these are just two um, uh, very simple APIs. Um, exposing a bunch of uh, objects, all right? So they are fairly different. And what I want to do now is I want to have a single entry point, all right, um, which is a gateway. And depending on the URL, um, I'm going to retract to either service A or service B, right? So the gateway is the only URL I'm going to hit. But depending on the on the termination of the URL, I'm gonna either go to one or the other. All right, so let's let's get the new um, gateway application here. So I'm just gonna stop this, and I'm gonna create a new project. All right, I'm gonna call it gateway. Uh, it's also going to be a web API, uh, but it can actually be empty. Um, I'm going to enable Docker support so it can run uh, the Docker support. And that's that's pretty much it. All right, so I'm going to click OK. All right, so now that I have my uh, new app, I'm just going to add a new dependency here. And I'm going to search for Ocelot, which is this awesome uh, package created by Tom Pallister, um, which is basically a gateway, right? And it's very simple to configure. So I'm going to install that. All right, so now we have uh, three little, little things that we need to configure, right? The first one is we need to create a config file. Okay, so I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to add this um, new configuration.json file. Okay, I'm just going to uh, copy the configuration for my blog so I don't need to type everything. Okay, so I'm going to Copy this one. 
and paste here. So basically what's saying here is um, wherever I hit the gateway with this A um, in, the, in the suffix, it's going to hit the service A instead, right? And I'm going to add another one here. So whenever I hit B, I'm going to service B. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And it's going to hit on port 80. Okay, with HGB. Alright, so that's it. And now I need to configure two more things. One is the startup. So it's going to be slightly different than how it is. So I'm going to start with the program first. I'm also going to copy these guys from here. Okay. Alright, so nothing fancy. Just gonna remove all these dependencies that are not used. Okay. And now I have to um, add the ocelot um, package and use in the service. Okay. So again in the startup, I'm just gonna add this things here, so I'm just going to configure this um, the startup itself so I can bring um, the app settings but at the end the configuration and that's the most important thing here because I'm going to use the configuration.json to actually configure the, the gateway itself okay uh, the next thing is the service so I'm just going to paste um, Pass here and I'm gonna go through that. Okay. Alright, so let me copy the dependencies as well. Sometimes it gets a bit kind of crazy. Okay. So in the conf uh, configure services, uh, I'm basically just adding Ocelot um, and I'm using this configuration here and I'm just adding a cage. That's just simple things um, as they are uh, introduced in the Ocelot website. Okay, and when I configure, I use Ocelot. Same way I would use uh, MVC or anything like that. Um, but this application is going to be used only for the gateway. Okay, uh, and then that's that's pretty much it. Okay, so let me have a look at the Docker Compose now, and let's see how it how it looks. Okay, so I've got um, three services here. Service A, Service B, and Gateway. Right, just keep in mind that when I, when I run Docker Compose, it creates its own DNS, in, its internal DNS, right? And if I hit the Gateway and I try to talk from the gateway to any of the service A or service B, um, the only thing I need to do is put service A or service B in the URL. So basically hit either service with HP um, column forward slash forward slash service A or service B. Okay? And, and that's why in the configuration I've got only this here. This is the host. Okay? So basically what's gonna What's going to hit is HP for slash service A from the gateway, and that's going to work. Okay. Externally, you would need to put the the, the port or, or attach a port to that service, but internally, that's how it's communicated. Okay. So let's um, compile and run this, and let's see how it works. All right, so now it's running. So let's have a look again into the containers that are running. So I'm going to clear that and I'm going to run Docker PS. So now I have um, three services running. So service A, service A here, service B, and gateway. All right, so they're all running different ports. So 70, 71, and 72. 
I'm just going to try the 71 and 72 just so you can see that the, the service A and B are running. And then we come back to the gateway. All right, so service um, 1, service A is 71, service B is 72. Okay, so let's try now 70, which is, which is the gateway. Right, so I should get a 404 because I haven't configured the the root. I've only configured A or B. All right. So if I come here and hit A, it should now load the service A. If I run B here, it runs the service B. All right. So now I can basically um, stop exposing the service A and service B directly and only use the gateway. Okay. But you, you would ask, all right, so you've configured um, the endpoint A and B, but um, what if you have um, multiple endpoints in service A or service B? How would, you, how would you handle that? All right, so that's very simple, actually. All you need to do here is basically do this. So everything and put the same thing here, okay? So when you hit the, the gateway with um, a slash anything after the slash, um, it would redirect to the service A and basically um, concatenate that everything that you put into to the same URL, okay? Um, and that's how you would expose multiple endpoints in the, in the service, okay? And that's pretty much it. So that's what we're using for our current client. Uh, I've, I've worked in multiple clients with the same situation where they couldn't expose some of the internal service. And when I got into the project, I saw some very nice, nice implementations where the gateway would have uh, duplications for all the endpoints, all the internal and external endpoints. So they would duplicate every single endpoint. So when you hit an endpoint, it would hit um, the internal service, very, a very manual process, okay? Uh, what also provides you is a way to configure that all in a JSON file. So you don't need to create any endpoint at all. You just configure once and then off you go, right? You can also limit the, the HV method you're going to use, or you can limit the HPS. And also, one thing that's pretty cool as well is the course, right? Uh, cross um, origin resource sharing. So, if you're using um, a JavaScript library like Angular and you have multiple servers that you're going to talk to, um, you have to configure course for every single service, okay? So, if you're using a gateway, you only need to configure course for the gateway, okay? And the gateway is going to be responsible for talking to the other services, which is pretty cool, right? Uh, I would love to use, for this line, I would love to use the Azure Functions proxies, uh, but unfortunately it's not, it's not one, it's not the option because they, they have a lot of internal stuff that they can't expose externally at all. So um, that's our limitation. But using Ocelot here works very nicely for us. And I hope you guys enjoyed. So if you have any questions, please um, let me know. Thanks for watching. Cheers.